Hi there, this is Just a Girl in Camas, Alicia King, and I, I'm going to try and put into words how happy I am to be here for this interview. I'm honored, I'm humbled, and I am in Seattle, Washington, and I am with Dennis Hayes. And I have to say, um, growing up in the Camas area, there is a high school there, um, Dennis Hayes Freedoms High School. There is a street there named Dennis Hayes. And I was thinking, who is this guy? The name, it kind of sounds familiar. I'm thinking he's important. Um, so upon some research, it has led me here. And if you don't know the name, I would love for you to look it up and do some research, listen to this interview and meet this gentleman. Dennis Hayes is one of the first founders, coordinators of Earth Day in 1970. Are we giving away any age or anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, I suspect it will be difficult for me to pretend not to be slipping into middle age. <laughs> all right, all right. So I came up here because Dennis is originally from Camas, and I think it's so amazing what Dennis is accomplishing in his life and where he's been, where he's going, what he's doing. So I'm here today to talk about your journey, and I'm just so excited to hear how this all began. And I think we need to start, and I'm sure you've had this talk with several people. I wanna go back to that first Earth Day. I wanna go back to 1970. I know, um, well, I'm gonna let you, where were you at that time when you got a phone call or were asked to participate in that? Well, I, I, I was a graduate student at Harvard. Um, I, I, actually, this began as a student project. I, every, this was the initial class at something called the Masters in Public Policy program at the Kennedy School. And uh, we were expected to go do something that was outside the classroom. I think the expectation was we'd intern with the Attorney General or something. But, mm -hmm. but this is coming out of the 60s and, and the Civil okay. Rights era and the anti-war movement. And, mm -hmm. and um, most of us wanted to do something that was more activist than what our professors had in mind for us. I had decided a couple of years earlier that I wanted to devote my life to um, trying to find ways to associate principles of ecology um, to human settlements. I mean, there was no vocabulary back then for urban ecology or industrial ecology or human ecology, but, but that general approach of trying to learn from nature to mimic what the lessons are of a, a couple billion years of evolution and mm -hmm. apply them to our settlements was what I wanted to do. So there was an, an article in the New York Times uh, about a senator from Wisconsin who wanted to do an environmental teaching on college campuses. And from the article, it sort of sounded like it was happening. But I hadn't heard anything about it at Harvard or in MIT or Boston University or MIT. Mm -hmm. So um, with the audacity of youth, I jumped on a plane, flew down to Washington, D.C., got myself up. I love that. <laughs> and got a 15-minute courtesy interview with the senator. Uh, and my hope was to get the charter to go up and organize Harvard. Um, and I'll, I'll confess, I thought maybe I might even get it for all of Cambridge. I do Harvard and MIT. Uh, the 15-minute the interview went on for about two and a half hours. He he'd had this article that appeared in the New York Times. He suddenly had tons of mail coming in, um, but wasn't sure what to do. He, mm -hmm. he thought it was a good idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but uh, So I, I had been fairly active in previous years at Stanford in various kinds of social movements, and so told him what I, I thought made sense for him to be uh, trying to to organize. Mm -hmm. I went back, got a call two days later from his chief of staff asking whether I would be, oh, I, I, I should say, I, I left with the charter to organize Boston when I left oh, his wow. office. And two days later got this telephone call saying, would you consider dropping out of college and coming down to organize the United States, which is probably the most rapid promotion that I've ever had in my life. Um, and it was irresistible, so dropped out, went down to do it. Um, it. This was right smack in the middle of what I wanted to do with my life. And so when, when those sorts of opportunities open up, you, you take them. I, I was uh, three quarters of the way through getting an MBA from Stanford Business School, which like Harvard's Kennedy School, were the, kind of the pinnacles of their respective areas. 
when King Faisal uh, launched the Arab oil embargo and suddenly energy, which I've been studying for the previous two years, became um, a really important national issue. I got a call from the governor's office in Illinois asking whether I come out and set up an energy office for them and wow. dropped out of that school. I mean, I've dropped out of a lot of schools <laughs> over my life. But when, when the job opportunity or whatever kind of opportunity mm -hmm. to do something that is right at the core of what you care about uh, comes along, you can't hesitate at that point. It, it's all about grabbing the ring when the ring is there because rings come and go. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for watching this interview today. Don't forget to subscribe on the left side column of my website. You can enter your email address and you'll get a notification every time I post a new interview. Just a Girl in Canvas is a 501c3. Your donation helps me support our community and bring us together with these awesome interviews. Thank you so much and I'll see you around town.